He's the number seven middleweight in the world. He has a big old fight coming up. He rode his Harley Davidson from Orange County all the way to Calabasas, California to come on down here. It's Sean Strickland on this week's Food Truck Diaries. I'm feeding them Mexican bowls. Let's go. Make it big, big, super thick. From my wallet to my check. I don't want it if it's skinny, but I need it if it's thick. Need a thick girl for the thick boy. I need everything I get, super thick. Used to have a model bitch, now I got a thick one. Yeah, I do. Last night went late, yeah, we had a sick one. Yeah, very drunk. Yeah, and I like options. Yeah. Sean Strickland. Oh. Came in. Finally, you're Fire, here, dude. my man. Joe Rogan Jr. What's Let's up, man? Go. Little, little taller, a little more handsome, a little, le little less not rich. Not as famous or not, rich, not but as, you know, he's the second rich. best thing. No, nowhere near as rich. All not right. even close. You came in on the hog, huh? Yeah, man. For traffic, dude. Fucking traffic's brutal out here. Now, you're probably the toughest guy here because you came in. You're not going to see too many motorcycles around here. With the motorcycle, though, aren't you? Because you've had an accent before. Yeah. On motorcycle, and you're out two years. Yeah, I just want traffic. Honestly, fucking, I was splitting lanes like 120 last night, and I was like, I shouldn't do this, but fuck this traffic, so. My question for you is, uh, obviously your manager works with Izzy, too. You guys are going to have to fight each other. I mean, I got to fight a big, scary black man first. You got, you got, you got to get through it's a scary Jerry motherfucker. Cadenaire. Yeah, he's a bad yeah. man. I'm not Izzy. I'm not going to run around with my fucking twinkle toes and, you know, run around like a little bitch. You're, you're going to go forward on him. I'm going to try. You're going to do your thing. Yeah, I'm going to fucking try. Did you... uh you know, coming off the last fight with Pierre, I, I had you beat him. I thought you were going to beat Pierre. I, me and your manager were talking about this before. I thought it, nine so, times out of ten, I think it's a good fight for you. Just shit happens. Yeah. Especially at this level. You know, man, fuck. I, if it was five rounds, I'd be a little bit more patient. Yeah. It's one of those fucked up things where I shit you guys not, shit you not. Right before I go to a fight, I tell my, my coach, I'm like, dude, I'm going to, like, two and a half minutes in, I'm going to fill this motherfucker out, and then I'm going to shoot on him. Two and a half minutes in, I get caught. So, you know, fighting here, he's a big fucking scare Brazilian. He's talented. Grew up in fucking poverty. He's a mean motherfucker. You know, he's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. I got clipped. This is what it is. Yep. On to the next. Yeah, but then on to the next. The good thing is you beat Jared Cannonier, you're right back in the title shot. So yeah, it's not like you Izzy. jump all the way back in the queue. Like the, yeah. the narrative of you versus Izzy is a pretty damn good I know. Game. I actually slid into Jared's DMs and I asked him if he'd let me win, but I don't What'd know. What'd he say? He, he was on the fence with it. You know, I said I'd give him half my purse. So He's like, oh, that's not a bad gig. Yeah. Is that legal? I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah, all right. But Fuck, as long I mean, as it respond. Look at Jemaya versus Kevin Holland, dude. We all blend the, we're all we blurring the lines of what's legal these fucking days. <laughs> dude, again, let me take the heat for that shit because I, I thought it was suspect. I thought oh. the UFC 279 was suspect. I got a lot of heat for that. And even I wasn't like, I'm not sold on this being a, a fixed job here. I'm just saying a little, it was a little too convenient for me. Everyone's like, this is ridiculous. How dare you? It happened very fucking weird. I'll That's what I that. said. Very weird. And you know, here's the thing about Chemayev. He's UFC's golden boy. They love the Chemayev. You know, everybody needs some Chemayev in their life, especially Dana White. Yeah. Yeah. So, I and mean. You, and you think, you? I heard you, uh, you're in a previous interview, you were saying Chemayev would probably be better at 80. He should be at 70. He'll be champ at 70, but 85 so if Easier. it wasn't for my accident, I would still be 70, and I'd be better at 70. But, you know, I had to go fucking hit a truck or a van, so that kind of put a cramp in my style. But, dude, life is better at 85. I mean, I'm fighting in eight weeks. You were about to eat a fucking food truck, you know? I don't know. I think it's... It's like gluten-free. It's healthy. This thing ain't fucking healthy. Uh, no, they have, they have fries, dude. Yeah, but, yeah you so, you know... Fries. Yeah, a 70 would be better for him, but the 85, dude, kind of takes his, the 70 takes his soul from you a little bit. Yeah. So he'll be happier at 85, and, you know, he'll be fine at 85. And you like him at 85? Like, you take, you, you like, take I mean, a shot a, at him? He's a, he's a big motherfucker, you know? He should be fine at 85. Scary dude, yeah. Yeah, he's a big motherfucker. He should be fine. I don't really think, um, I don't really think that, you know, he's going to have an issue at 85. No, not, I, he's a big, have you, obviously you've seen him in person. He's a big Yeah, dude. We, we train a lot. He's a solid dude. Oh, you've trained with him? Yeah, no, he's a good dude. He's a good fucking dude. And how's it go training? Oh, fucking A, man. He, he, like, everybody to him is a fucking... There's a video of me, like, asking him to go light on people. And everybody to him, dude, is a fucking punching bag. He's like, you could be like, you could be like, Chimaya, this guy is, like, three fights, dude. He's new. He's, like, he's a fucking 55-er. Don't hurt him. And Chimaya's like, I understand. I understand. And next thing you know, Chimaya's on top and beating the Just fuck out of him. Breaking his neck. But, I mean, he... But you, here's the thing, though. You, like, training with that intensity, I respect that. Like if I go Me to too. someone's if I go to someone's gym, and unless a coach says, "Hey, be nice to this motherfucker," like I'm not gonna be nice to your team. I'm gonna try to knock them all out. 
Why the fuck not? That's why we cross train. But I, but word on the street is you go pretty hard too. I mean, you're respectful, but you go hard too. It depends, man. I mean, it depends. Like you know, fucking. The thing about fighting, dude, these days, there's a lot of fucking pussies, especially Americans. And Americans are the biggest fucking pussies. How so? Like, I mean, how many current American champs are there? Correct. Like, you know, you look at this badass fucking Brazilian just knocked me out. Like, bro, it's like Americans are soft as fuck, dude. Too much fucking Starbucks. Life is fucking too good for you, motherfucker. We're too comfortable. I'm almost like, I'm almost, I'm almost hoping Russia fucking nukes us. Just so our fucking nuts get a little bigger, dude. You guys are too soft. We're too soft. Yeah, fucking beta males, they're fucking man buns and shit. There's probably a couple man buns behind me. Let me see. Yeah, there's let's see. There's only one. one man bun. There's only one. No, well, Dude, I mean, but hair. they all could have yeah. fucking man buns. We could yeah. have some. You so you think you're like the last? Yeah, and I'm the last you, you, white trap. I'm the '90s, bro. Patrick fucking Swayze, <laughs> ride motorcycles, dude. Fuck hot women. So Fuck, you don't. Dude. So you don't see a lot of Americans. Well, it's also, there's this big surge of Dagestanians and Russians because they come up doing it. Yeah, well, it's not that they come up doing it because they're hard fucking men. You could take, you could take MMA fighters who've been training since they're kids and they're still fucking pussies, they're Americans. Like, my main training partners, not a lot of them are Americans. If I do train the Americans, they're usually like D1 wrestlers. They're like, they have grit Those to kids them. are tough. Like, yeah. Bo Nickel, you and Bo Nickel are like the two Americans doing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, but most Americans, you guys are fucking pussies. I don't know what happened to you guys. Maybe the plastic in the water, fucking... I don't know. I, I'm sure Joe Rogan knows why. Let's ask this fucking he guy. He might know. Yeah, what we, your we buddy call say? him after. Yeah, we should yeah, call we'll him. Ask him. Why are we yeah, such pussies? How do I get on his fucking why podcast? Why are we such pussies? That's the guy that gets me famous. I could write a fucking book deal after going to Joe Rogan. Maybe. I'm just fucking joking. Yeah, it's different. You're a good comedian, bro. Look, I'm funny too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking. You're good at press conferences, man. Oh, that's why I'm fucking here. I can't fight, but I can make you fucking pussies no, laugh. No, you can fight. Don't sell yourself short. And especially if you beat Jared Cannonier, then you're fighting for a title shot. Mm. Time will tell. But yeah, anyways, back to my rant about Americans. You guys are just soft motherfuckers. You got to get hit by your family more. We need to bring back alcoholism, maybe some drug abuse. Be good for you guys. Just toughen them up. Yeah, dude, yeah. Look at I me. Mean, look at like you grew, you grew up tough. Yeah, That's why I mean, you have that perspective. I mean, you know, you fucking dodge a couple beer bottles when you're a fucking kid. You like, you, you harden up. I'm not saying that the world would be better, a better place than more of me, but you guys need to get hit by your dads a little bit more. Not even hit, not like, not discipline. You guys don't need to be like, I didn't take out the trash, hit. You guys need to get like an alcoholic rage beating, and then you'll start fucking learning how to have, you know, nuts. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I think some of the experts might have some questions about that, but you seem to know what you're doing. Yeah, dude, we all know, dude. Like, we all fucking know. Like, I was a product in the 90s. Like, who do you guys, like, action heroes of the, of the 220, 2022? Who do you guys got? Who do these kids have to look up to? Chris Pratt? Yeah, we would. The Rock? The Rock. Fuck it. The Rock's a fucking beta male, dude. Everybody loves The Rock. Why? Because The Rock doesn't piss anybody off. We had fucking Patrick Swayze, fucking the Terminator <coughs> before he starts fucking his maid. We had. We had Special good, Sloan. Bro, we had good people. They would ride motorcycles. They liked guns. They would fuck hot women. They would fight people. We had John Claude Van Damme. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now we got The Fucking Rock, dude. We had Chuck Norris. And again, I like The Rock. The Rock's a likable fucking guy. But that guy's a fucking pussy, and this is who your kids are looking up to. So let me ask you this, Damn Sean. Who, who's, who's tough in your eyes, then, in today's world? <sighs> that's, what, that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Like, you There's guys, none. Here's the thing, dude. Like, Roadhouse. I was thinking about this the other day. You guys all seen fucking Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze? Yep, they're redoing it. Oh. Your boy Connor's in it. But they were thinking about casting, what, Ronda Rousey at one point? Did they joke about that? She was casted. She was supposed to do it, yeah. Fuck, Ronda Rousey, guys? How do you put Ronda Rousey in the same category as Patrick Swayze? Ronda Rousey's a soft, soft woman. Here's the thing. You know what Ronda Rousey do to Patrick Swayze if they fought, though? I don't know about that, dude. I would fuck Ronda Rousey with both hands tied behind my back. Yeah, I've never hit a woman. <laughs> Well, at least not unconsensually, but. But you're the number seventh middleweight in the world. Patrick Swayze. Bottom I mean, line is, dude, here's the thing, you guys. Women are very strong. They're very amazing. I love them. But women are weak. You know, women are fucking weak. My manager, Tim, he's like this big, jerks off Izzy for a living. And, you know, he could probably fuck up Ronda Rousey. Oh, man. I don't know. Not like that. No, dude. If you watch Gegard Mousasi wrestle with Ronda Rousey, it's like him playing with a little fucking puppy. Like, you know, like. Fuck me, what is Ronda Rousey gonna fucking do? Like, is the entire movie about her trying to get Tampax in the fucking men's restroom? Like, what the fuck are we script. doing? I didn't read the script. Yeah, fuck, dude. All right, moving on. Dude. No, let, let me feed you. Let me feed you. Yeah, fuck. So, no, I'm, yeah. I didn't get Until so you get too fired up. Let me feed you fuck so you don't man, get too dude. fired up. All right.
I'll do the uh, asada rice bowl. Okay. And can I, I get a side of shrimp on there too? Sure. Whatever this gentleman's having. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the uh, heritage bowl. Okay. Yeah. Alright, I'll do it. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, this is good, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. What's up, fam? Thank you guys for watching. Let's take a little break from chatting with the very unique Sean Strickland. Because guess what? Fall is here, and that means it's time to shave down that bush you're working with, fellas. That's right. The leaves are falling. It's time that bush takes a falling as well. Maybe you're getting your pumpkin spice latte, and you're like, man, this bush is getting out of control. It's like Jumanji down there, my Levi's. I got to figure this out. Well, my friends at Manscaped got you covered. That's right. They got you covered, man. Join the 6 million bros worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOB20 for the best male grooming products on the freaking planet Earth. All right? Whether you're brand new or already with the team at Manscaped, you could use the crown jewel of care for your family jewels. I'm talking about that Platinum Package 4.0. If you watched this show before, you've watched a fight companion, you know we ride with Manscaped. You know a little something about the pl Platinum Package 4.0. But if you don't, you're new and just tuning in because you're a Sean Strickland fan, well, I'm glad you came. Welcome. Welcome to the Thick Squad. And what we do is we take care of our underparts, our undercarriage. It's firing up down there. But the one thing we don't have here is a bush because we use the Platinum Package 4.0. In this package, what do you get, Brendan? Glad you asked. What do you get? You get the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Nose Ear Hair Trimmer, all right? Then you also get the whole Body Wash Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner, plus you get the Ultra Premium Deodorant, and the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver to make sure your balls are smelling real tasty for your friends down there, all right? You also get a little shed travel bag so you can put everything in there. They're giving you a free gift. That's right. You get a free gift. You get the boxers as well and a shed travel bag to put all your goodies into it. So go to manscaped.com, get 20% off, and free shipping with code SHOP20. That's S-C-H-A-U-B-20. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code SHOP20. Manscaped, clear out the leaves. It's your tree trunk's time to shine. Now let's get back to the program. All right, my man, let's dig in. Looks Ball. pretty good. Balls aren't sweaty anymore. Uh, it's it, it's hot in the valley, man. Hopefully you don't shit your pants and run your motorcycle after eating this. Yeah, no, it's good, man, it's good. So I'm not really that hungry, but not to not to break the fucking fourth wall we're supposed to eat, right? This is the fucking podcast. No, so. you don't even have to eat. Oh, well, that's you can just stare good. at it. Thanks, you guys. don't have to do anything. Really fucking good. You man. got a fight coming up. You oh, don't have go. to. I'll I'll eat yours when you leave. That's how this works, dude. I'm living off coffee today. Black but, coffee? No, fuck no. Are you kidding me? I'm not a fucking. You're not, I'm not a, a savage. Man. I'm not a man. You're not <laughs> fucking that whole rant. No, cream, and, cream and fucking sugar, dude. Dude, I thought for sure Patrick no. Swayze drinks it black. For God's sake. Yeah, Patrick Swayze is also fucking dead. You know? <laughs> this is a fair point. Fucking man died of cancer. You drink black coffee. Drink some cream and sugar. Be fucking happy. That might do it, dude. No, nah, dude. Life is fucking miserable enough, dude. Enjoy your cream and sugar. Die of fucking diabetes. Be fucking happy. Eat some fucking gluten. Be a fucking happy guy. Why not? Yeah, why the fuck uh, not? That's a good message. Yeah, but it's nice being in this fucking studio. My yeah, balls aren't it's so, it's so hot, It's dude. fucking nice in here. You yeah. guys should see it, man. It's fucking nice. It's not. Nice. Thanks, brother. One of your uh, your buddies slipped the beans that used to date Ronda Rousey. Back to a hot second ago. How was that, dude? How was that? You married? You got a girlfriend? I have a wife, two kids, my man. Oh, shit. So yeah. we won't go there. How was Ronda yeah. Rousey? You bag she, of fucking crazy? She was crazy? cool. She was a savage. I'll tell you what. I've been around. A savage? Are we talking about a savage? Are we? I'm, I'm telling you, Bubba. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I don't know what women you have in your gym. Her, when she was coming up, savage, my man. I've seen her beat up dudes. Savage. Let me tell you why. I hate Ronda Rousey, you guys. I'd love to hear it. Do you know her at all? Have you ever met her? Never met her. Okay. I'm sure she's a really sweet so girl. So take that with a grain of salt. She did like a really hot, like uh, Sports Illustrated one. She had mm. like almost a nipple showing. I'm sure you love that. But <laughs> or you didn't care. Mm. But let me tell you why I hate Ronda Rousey. So Ronda Rousey goes on Ellen DeGeneres, you know, who is a known cunt, by the way. Just thought she'd seem clear. And she says after her loss, she thought about committing suicide. And after that, after, after the Holly Holm loss, yeah, yeah, yeah. And after that, I was like, "You are the weakest fucking human being I've ever met, or I've ever, ever heard speak." And after that, I hated her, like mental fucking midget. I can see from your perspective how you can think that. I, I think for her, she's playing. Were a you with her during the time or no? No, uh, -uh when she lost, no, way before that. 
So I, th I think for her, there's so much expectations on her. Her mom, I don't know if you know how she grew up. Yeah, and her dad like killed himself too. Correct. But, but here's the thing, dude. So it's in, right, it's in her family. Here's the thing, dude, and this is my... Y'all saw him out, also, before you go on, y'all saw him out the most famous person in the UFC at the time. Oh, yeah, no, I'll, right. I'll tell you right now. But you're worth multi-millions. Multi, and I mean, this, is, this is why you, you have personal insight. You are one of the most famous people. People love you. People want to fuck you. They want to marry you. I mean, you probably at the time did too. <laughs> no offense. But, like, people love, people love this fucking woman. There's kids right now that would fucking cut off their hand for one more day to live, for going sure. through chemo. And you go on an Ellen show after mm. all your money and you mm. cry, you talk about fucking suicide, like mm. you are the weakest motherfucker. Like if you, haven't, if you haven't had a gun or a knife to your body at some point, like you probably aren't even my fucking friend. Mm. But like it, she wasn't contemplating suicide, she was fucking depressed. And, and after she did that interview, I just, it ruined everything about her, me, her to me. It's like- I can see how you think that. And, and kids these days, you know, there's another thing with fucking kids these fucking days. Like since when did suicide become fucking cool? Like, and you guys- It's an it, easy way out. And no, it became fucking cool. Yeah. They made some stupid fucking Netflix show, what, 13 Reasons? Oh yeah, you right. I didn't watch that, dude. Like when I was a kid, no one talked really about suicide. Never. It wasn't fucking- How old are you? Uh, 31. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it wasn't yeah. fucking cool. It wasn't an option. Yeah, and now you take these kids these days, and every fucking kid has to have some, like, persecution. Let me tell you why, like, let me tell you why at this one point in my life, I was depressed. I contemplated suicide. No, you're a fucking snowflake. You've watched too much fucking TV. And, like, with it's Ronda TV Rousey. TV and social media, too. And that was with Ronda Rousey. It's like, she needed some sort of, like, let me tell you why... Let me tell you why, like, I'm a victim. Like, no, you're not a fucking victim. I can see how you think that, but one thing you should know is Rhonda does suffer from mental illness. You we all saying? fucking suffer from mental illness. Bro, do you, you don't suffer from mental illness? I don't. You, you, don't, you never went through depression. You've never contemplated suicide. Never. Oh, fuck. Maybe he's a fucking sociopath, dude. Maybe. Nobody, Maybe nobody, in, this fucking, nobody in this fucking room has contemplated suicide at one point in life. Nobody in this fucking room. Fucking red shirt guy, he did. Every motherfucker at some point, not every motherfucker, but a lot of us have laid in bed and thought to ourselves, like, man, I'm really sick of this shit. Like, I'm fucking done. And, and to go on Ellen and to say, I'm a multimillionaire, I'm beloved, I'm loved by the world, and I, and I, and I thought about it, let me get a hug, let everybody rally around me, that's some weak-ass shit. But you're, you're mad that she did on Ellen. You're not mad that I, she felt that way, because you just said you felt that way. No, I'm mad because it's like, how are you, so uns how are you not self-aware? Like... I mean, you travel. You've been to these third world fucking. You've yeah. been to these third world fucking countries. You're talking about people, man. They don't have running water. They don't have fucking roofs. Like there, there's girls getting raped by their fathers as we speak. Getting fucking beat. There's so much fucked up shit going on in the world. And if you look in the mirror and you can't acknowledge how blessed you are, like sure. I just, I can't fucking deal with that. I get that. I can't even be I around you. Let's take another little break from chatting and shoving food in our mouth with Sean Strickland. Kids, I know you've heard about it by now. That Tiger Thick Sweet Nectar award winning. We're winning all sorts of awards. You see it online. You see it all over. People are like, how can I get it? What are we doing here? Oh, my God. What are we going to do? Well, guess what? We just restocked, Daddy. That's right. If you go to thickboy.com right now, you can click on Tiger Thick. You will see the sweet nectar is in stock and available to be shipped straight to your door. Go to thickboy.com, click on Tiger Thick, and it will be shipped to your door. That sweet, sweet award-winning nectar. Get on it. This episode of Food Truck Diaries with Sean Strickland is also brought to you by the best Kratom on planet Earth. That's right, baby, Kratom. Now, a lot of you guys are like, man, I'm, I'm thinking about trying to, I don't know. It's kind of the Wild West out there. It's like CBD about six years ago, and now CBD is everywhere, and you can trust some companies. Well, guess what? Trust your thick friend here. I take this Kratom because it's the only Kratom I trust. Those other brands, I'm not sure. Can't vouch for them. But the one I can vouch for that I use on every single show that you watch me on, and if you come to my stand-up shows, every single time I'm using Happy Hippo Kratom. That's right. It's the only brand I trust. I take the pink lemonade shot three to four times a day. Some say I have a problem. All good. I enjoy it. Helps me speak. I need all the help I can get. If you want to use the best focus product I've ever used, and guess what? It's all natural. That's right. It's all natural. No gimmicks. We got you covered. Go to happyhippoherbals.com. Use promo code THICKBOY for 20% off for life. You can share that with your aunt, your freaking gay sister, whoever it is, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, friends, nephews, cousins, 
your MySpace top five friends, if you're still doing that stuff, your Grinder profile, your Tinder profile, whatever you want. Use the promo code THICKBOY for 20% off for life. All you got to do is go to happyhippoherbals.com. Use promo code THICKBOY, 20% off for life. Use as many times as you want. You're welcome. When you, when you lost to Piera, it didn't cross my mind because you, you're such a strong mental, yeah. mentally dude. It, it didn't cross your mind. I mean, you're depressed. Like, you're depressed for, for sure. a month. But in the day, dude, you're like, we're all going to fucking die. You know, yeah. I remember, like, there's this guy. I, not to harp on Ronda Rousey. I just, I fucking do not like her. I, 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 you would change your tune if you met her. I'm sure, but here's the thing. You, no, you guys have similar. Here's the thing. You have similar. Here's the thing. You're a nice fucking guy, dude. Yeah. You're a nice fucking guy. And here's the problem with nice fucking guys. Whenever you meet another nice person, you don't want to be like, hey, you're a fuckhead. Because you're a nice guy. But, like, calling nice people fuckheads is one of the best things ever. Like, you know, like, you're but, talking but about not the liver. But not if they're nice. But, you're, but if they're an actual nice person, there's no reason to call them a fuckhead. But, then like, you're the, the liver asshole. king. You're talking about the liver king. I'm talking about the liver king. Nice person. But he's a fucking asshole. Here's my thing, Sean. You don't know him. But I do you know, know him. No, you don't know I know him. what he's saying. No, you, know he's, no, you don't know. No, no. You don't, no, you know him as an asshole from YouTube. No, 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 so no. So that's, no. like, that's like calling somebody that you don't know an so asshole. So your, your persona isn't... No reflection of you. I could go and say whatever I want. It's not a reflection of me. What do you mean? So here's the liver king. You're, from his, you're saying from his? Yeah, so he's this nice guy. He, 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 he peddles supplements. He lies. He's probably on the roids. He talks about masculinity. He walks around with his shirt off. That guy is an asshole. He is no better than a fucking woman, but we all highlight him because he has some fame. We put him on a show, but that man is an asshole. And fucking Wait, he's an asshole because he's just because a fraud. He's just a phony. He's a fraud. Mm. Like he's just he's a clown. And like we all sit there and like in 2022, the day of social media and TikTok, we're all like, oh, the liver king. Let's let's put this asshole up on a pedestal. That guy is no different than a fucking beta male woman. No fucking different. My, my only caveat with that is, so his his message is right is to eat healthy. Live like the caveman, dude. So if he's promoting health, I don't give a fuck how famous he is. But again, I will say he does say a lot of good shit about eating eating clean. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that. that. So his main message is eating clean, living like the caveman did, right? I don't give a fuck if he's on steroids. I don't give. I don't give a but fuck. But again, it's just time. like it's a gimmick, dude. It's the fucking gimmick. Like we live in a world with fucking gimmicks. Just be a normal motherfucker. That's fair. Put a shirt on. You do fucking steroids. You're selling. I just I don't like. I don't like how we live in the social media world where you have people who are, you know, Norm MacDonald did a great one. He talked about like an astronaut going to the moon. He's like, fuck man, like what do I got to do to be famous? Motherfuckers going to the moon. Like what do I got, and we only know like one or two of them that went to the moon. He's like, how do I fucking top that? Now you have 2022 fucking like the Kardashians and like. Well, they're not going, to, they're actually barely even getting out of the But way. more yeah. people know the Kardashians than the motherfuckers that land on the moon. Because was we, Buzz Aldrin, right? That was yeah, from, I mean, yeah, but, old I mean, school, dude. But, but I'm saying, though, it's like we live in a world where it's so easy to be famous. And For the, nothing. the intellectual bar is going down so much that if I want to be famous, I don't go and have an intelligent conversation. I act like a fucking idiot. I go that's in, one way to get famous. But that's, they, there's, we, there's other people who get famous from being smart. Give me TikTok, better than Joe Rogan. And, T- you say TikTok? I mean, but, but give me who else? Jordan Pop. Peterson. Jordan Peterson. You, you're naming three people who are conservative icons. Most people... No, most, I'm, no I'm saying whether they're left or right. There's, and, and most, there's people on the left who are smart. Most there. people, you go talk to most people, nobody's listening to Ben Shapiro and, and Jordan. You have... His, 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 his tax income at the end of the month would beg the devil. Yeah, but again, but again, we're talking about like the vast majority of like 18-year-olds to 25-year-olds. I don't even know why I got on this fucking tangent at this point. No, I like but, it. I but if it. you, oh, that liver king, why, oh, you, yeah. why, why you should not be nice to assholes. Why nice people, why nice people, you should call them assholes for being assholes. Because we live in a world where like, you know, you look, go back, like motherfuckers would wear suits, they would dress nice, they were talking away. Now, if you want to make money, you want to be famous, you got to be an outlandish, out, I mean, look at me for instance, you got to be an outlandish, you got to walk around with a shirt off, you got to wear a rash guard everywhere you fucking go. We just like we just gotta go. Oh, rascal. We just gotta. I mean, that one fucking weirdo. We just gotta. Talking about John Denner. Yeah, John fucking. He's a smart dude, man. Oh, he's a fucking. Again, another fucking weirdo. I wear a rash guard to a wedding because it keeps me warm. It's no, you're a fucking weirdo, and you want fucking attention, and you're pandering. You're pandering to the Tim Planet fucking douchebags. Well, no, he's not Tim Planet. Well, but again, you, all the Tim Planet guys fucking worship that fucking guy. I love Tim Well, they Planet. worship Eddie Casey, Bravo. Casey, I'll give you a shout-out. My boy Casey Hasselstead in Vegas. 
Fucking guy's a killer. If you're ever in Vegas training with him, Tim Planet guy, one of the best coaches ever. But anyways, we talk about D Danaher. John Danaher. Dan, yes. what are the John things? Danaher, yes. But he might be a smart guy. He is a smart guy because he comes Change from Jiu Jitsu. He comes from you, Jiu Jitsu Fox, and then you, he manipulates people like, I wear a rash guard. I'm a fucking weirdo. And everyone, like, he creates this cult like fucking following. Like, we, we but, just. But my thing is, Sean, a world, like, of, why, clowns. Why, why world did, of clowns. But why did he create that cult like following? Because people are fucking dumb. It's not because he's a talented no, jiu -jitsu outside are the box thinker. Dumb. But you have these people, like, I mean, who the fuck is John Danaher? He wrote a book on jiu-jitsu? No, he created a lot of the moves that th these guys use. But again, at the end of the day, dude, we live in a world of fucking clowns. And that's one thing I'll say about you, dude. You're not a even Joe Rogan. You guys aren't a clown. No. But the breed of, of, of intellectual people is going down. I, and I agree with you that. And, yeah. and we are a dying fucking breed because, like, what we have now, like... It's a dying fucking breed, dude. Let me ask this, Sean. Who do you like? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> Joe Ro Just Joe Rogan? I mean, it's hard, I'm man. sure he's done some stuff to piss you off, though. Uh, I mean, We all do. If you talk long enough, you're, gonna, you yeah. can't, you're not going to be pleased with everything anybody says 100% of the time. The, the problem is, dude, like, I get along a lot with like Russians and like a lot of these like harder people. Because That's because you, you grew up hard, brother. Well, yeah, because I talk to these fucking people. They're not clowns. Yeah. They're, they're just, they're just they're solid fucking guys. Yeah, they're tough. And then you come to America, and you got the Ronda fucking Rousey. No offense to you. I know you like the girl, but, like, you got, you got these fucking just soft, uh, he, uh, weak uh, Brother, I'm telling you, Ronda did, no, Ronda Ronda Rousey, did not and grow up soft. Hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Ronda Rousey's a hard bitch. I'm She's telling fucking you. strong. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you. Ronda Rousey, I mean, she fucking went in there, and, like, she fucked people up. Mm -hmm. As a fighter... Ronda Rousey deserves all the credit she gets. Mm -hmm. All the credit she gets. But when she I say rough, when man. I say soft, that's not what I mean. Soft. Tell me what your I mean. Soft, of soft, just is. like oh, you're talking the way she helped. Yeah, dealt you, with the you loss. think you think you take any you think you take Alex Pereira, any of these fucking Brazilians, and you give them all this fucking money, and they go get knocked out. They're gonna go on the Ellen and be like, "Well, I, I went back to my country." Um, I I I, uh, I no running water, no food, no electricity, mm -hmm. and I looked in the mirror with all my millions, and I thought about killing myself. Mm -hmm. Fuck no! They're gonna be like, man, I came from fucking nothing. I can't even drink the water in my country. Yeah. I'm a happy motherfucker. And I so what that. I mean, that's what I mean by soft. I get you. And, and the problem is too, the other thing we have. That's also her perspective, right? But, she has no other perspective. But she again, didn't, per, she, she she didn't grow up in the favelas. Per perspective, and this is another thing like the modern generation that I fucking can't stand. It's always perspective. Like, let me tell you. Brendan Schaub's perspective. So you understand why his views suck. And you're like, oh, well, I, I, I get that. No, motherfucker, you don't get that. Just because you have a perspective and I could somewhat relate to it, it doesn't mean it's right. And, and that's the thing with well, like- for Rhonda's, it does though. She grew up, her dad committed suicide. She grew up, her bro, mom straight I will tell you about my dad. I, my dad was laying in bed one day, laying in bed with a 45. I fucking walked up. He was talking about suicide. And I was like, dad, you should fucking do it. You know, you should How fucking do it. I was like 17. I was like, your wife left you. You're unemployed. You're a fucking drug addict. Your life sucks. Like, you should fucking do it. I took the gun, put it to his head, put his hand on it, said, do it. Didn't fucking do it. Died at 50-something of cancer mm. and miserable. Fucking mm. miserable. And now you could all look at that and be like, oh, Sean, you advocated for suicide. Look, I didn't advocate for suicide. Mm. I... I I knew that he would have been better off, and he died miserable. Fucking Your cancer, chemo. All can't, he did. He was so fucked up on drugs. You, by the time he figured out he had cancer, like it was everywhere. Yeah. Fucking miserable. And, and this is the last thing I'll say on that. There is this guy, solid guy, holds pads at PI, and he was telling me that he OD'd. And you know, me being an asshole, I'm like, oh fuck, were you partying? You're trying to fucking take a nap. And he's like, oh, well, it's a little bit of both, you know. And I told him story about my dad. I said, let me tell you something. There's people like my dad who you can give them a million dollars, a billion dollars, and every day here they're going to wake up miserable, vindictive, fucking shady. Doesn't matter what circumstance they're in, they're a miserable fuck. And Good. that's why I gave my dad the gun, and it was more of like putting a dog down. Yeah. Like, like, let me put, him out of his misery. put you out of your... I know this sounds fucked up, you know, and I told about that my buddy, and I'm like, listen, I don't think you're that fucking guy. You're a good guy. Yeah. You're a happy guy. I see you around here. You have a good personality. I don't think you're my dad. Yeah. But if you are my dad, I'm going to be the first motherfucker. Hey, aim for the head. And wh where was your mom during all this? Uh, I fucking staying somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sean, I think a lot of your perspective, and it's gotten you pretty fucking far. You're number seven in the world, and you win this next fight, you fight for a world title. But don't you think a lot of your perspective comes? You grew up fucking rough, dude. That's why you relate to these Russians. That's but why it's you also, to the but again, it's also going back to that. You, what do you, mean? you guys think that the land of plenty lasts forever? The land of what? The land of plenty. You guys, you guys think that America lasts forever? It doesn't. You look at, you look at the economy. You look at where it's going, like. Yeah, we're in some trouble. We, you, the, the, the softness of the world, it's going to revert back. The land of plenty America is not going to last forever. Agree. And, like, you, you fucking soft motherfuckers, dude, like, you all will be me. Enjoy it now. Give it three or four generations, five generations, six generations. Mm-hmm. It's going to go back. It's going to go back. And then, you know, I'm just a little bit, a little bit too old for my time. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're an original. You're an outlier. You're also, what makes you unique is, like, I know you're in But a lot of show. people, like, also, a lot of people yeah. like me, though, because I'm a, I, I represent a lot of people. I represent a lot of people where the dads got drunk, beat the fuck out of them. Correct. You know, I represent a lot of people. still doing something positive. Yeah, I mean, too, I mean, if it wasn't for this, dude, I would have fucking probably either been a serial killer or been in jail. Like, yeah, but you did. You're doing this, number seven middleweight in the world in the UFC, which is tough to get to, my man. Yeah, no, again... It is, dude. But yeah, I just think a lot of people kind of relate to me and like my fan base, they understand what it's like to be like the, like, you know, especially being a white guy. Correct. Like, you know, you hear a lot of like, and th- this is my fan base. You hear a lot of this whole white privilege. And now you come to me like, dude, I was cutting the locks off the water main. Yes. Like I didn't have electricity sometimes. Yeah, you grew up rough. So you, you have like this white jaded population. They yeah. see me and they're like, yeah, that's, that's how I grew up. Dodging beer cans, like the water was shut off. Like, you know, you go, you go bounce a check at this store. More like, people than you know relate to that. Let's take a little break. Last break. I know you're like, oh my God, what are these two going to say? This is getting crazy. Don't worry. We'll get right back to the program. But I got to tell you something about Alpha Brain from my friends at Onnit. Alpha Brain, ever heard of it? The best nootropic ever. It's everywhere. If you haven't heard about it, are you living under a rock? How about this? You've always heard about it and you haven't tried it, but you want to try it? Well, guess what? I got you guys. I got everybody covered. All you got to do is go to onnit.com and use uh, it's onnit.com slash FTD for a food truck diary, right? Onnit.com slash FTD. You save 10% off not only Alpha Brain, but all supplements, all workout gear at onnit.com. When you use the code onnit.com slash FTD, you get the best nootropic on the freaking planet. My boy Joe Rogan says he uses it for every pod. It helps him form better sentences. That's right. You want to be more like Joe Rogan? Me too. And I'm hoping Alpha Brain gets me there. It's up for debate. We'll see. Here's the cool thing. If you don't love it, you get your money back. No return necessary. All you got to do is give them about two weeks. You get your money back. You have nothing to lose here. You've always wanted to try Alpha Brain. Now's your time. You can use the promo code onnit.com slash FTD or you can go to your local Walmart. I'm trying to help you out and not get you to go to Walmart because it's a waste of everybody's time, right? Nobody wants to go to Walmart and sit in line and look at the trolls there. We don't want to do that. So go to onnit.com slash FTD, save 10% off the best nootropics on the planet from Onnit. Onnit.com slash FTD, 10% off the entire Onnit website. What else you want from me? Let's get back to the program. I mean, I, w- I want you, I've been a fan for a while. I mean, I've stuck up for you for a while. I thought you were going to beat Pierre. The reason I want you on the show is because, like, this isn't manufactured. Like what you're saying, all this stuff is. Of course, I knew you were gonna say some wild. Well, we all shit, we all think, but it. it's not manufactured. Yeah, we, we, we all think it. What I say is something we all think. And do I do I put a little flavor on it? Do I make it sound outland, outlandish? Yeah, sure. Like, I'm I'm not racist. No. I don't fucking hate gays. I like fucking bi women. Yeah. You know, I, I I'm an equal opportunity person. I think I'm on this table. But what I say, a lot of people agree with it, and it might be it might be off color. Might be I mean, you're paying a price for it too, because you know sponsorships are gonna be tough to get. It's just hard, man. Like, don't me wrong, dude. If I knew if I could toe the line and vote for Biden and suck the dick like the rest of these fucking guys, and you know, fucking Tim with Izzy. I mean, doesn't Izzy have some fucking? You know, if I could do that, if I could paint my nails and be a, it fucking, would be impossible for you. It would be fucking impossible. It's impossible for me. It would be a fucking impossible for yeah. me. Yeah. But I'm not to knock on Ron, dude. She's a good girl. I like Ron. I don't think you're not gonna, dude. Again, I know you don't like perspective, but you grew up a fucking tough life, man. Tough, tougher than most. Wait, no, but so that's gonna be your perspective. Not tougher than most, dude. Like I met motherfuckers, dude. That, from what you grew up with, just it's all good, dude. But but it's, here's the it thing, wasn't though, easy. But the crazy thing is, though, dude. Like I grew up, like my, my life compared to some motherfuckers I know is fucking Disneyland. 
Sure. Fucking Disneyland. Sure. So it's it doesn't like doesn't matter though. Yeah, but I just think that dude. America, but that's why you're such a, like a rugged, hardcore dude. Yeah, fuck. Dude. But you've changed because you have better perspective now, <sighs> right? Better perspective. Don't turn that shit on me. I changed because you got mature. You grew up because I got out of my environment and I got exposed to the world. That would be perspective, Sean. Oh, fucking a. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But you're you're fucking you're splitting cunt hairs on me right now. No, I'm like, just saying, dude. That would be you got a you got a different. We you can call it whatever you want. Yeah. We won't say perspective. The word perspective triggers you. You know. You know what it is. Dude? I had like I'll tell you why. I had a lot of people help me as a child. And it wasn't the white principals, it wasn't the white teachers, like a lot of people who helped me, like especially the MMA, Mexicans, black guys. Yeah. So you got you know, you take somebody who me, I had these deep racist thoughts sure. from like a kid to about 14. And you didn't know better. I didn't know better. Yeah. I, I, you're angry, dude, you need something to hate. Yep. You know, when you're angry, and if I don't know if you guys know this, you either hate someone or you hate yourself. Correct. And like, that is a very fucking slippery path to put a bullet in your head. So. You know, you you find something to hate, but man, like every white person I've ever met when I was a kid and I would, you know, draw a swastika on my arm, they would be like, fuck you, we're gonna kick you out of school. We're gonna put you in a, uh, we're gonna put you in a continuation school. I had a teacher once tell me, uh, they build prisons for people like me, seventh grade, uh, fucking Miss Waja. Fuck you, Miss Waja. Yeah, what's uh, up now? I've only been in prison once, fuck you. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah, wrong. <laughs> Joke's on you. Yeah. But you know, and then, so then I go and branch out. I go and branch out. And I actually even felt some shame for this. I would go meet people of color or Mexicans, and they would like grew up in a shitty neighborhood. And you know, I, I started realizing I have a lot in common with you guys. Mm -hmm. Like me and you guys are the same. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the Mexicans, like my buddy David Gomez, I David Gomez, you might be in jail for murder, man. I miss you, buddy. I hit you up on Instagram. Where the fuck you at? <laughs> but uh, you know, like, like uh I started realizing, man, me and you guys are the same. Like me and you guys are the same. And then I was, and then I started really like looking at my perspective, like, fuck dude, like I almost don't like white people anymore. Is this fucking possible? Yeah. All the white people in my life, they fucking shit on me. They yeah. kicked me out of fucking school. They fucking abuse me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? All these things. And all my homies, I'm like, man. So it's kind of like this weird awakening to me where I'm starting to realize and like, and it even got to a point to where like it almost swapped. Where like I'm like, you know, fuck you, man. Yeah. Like fuck you, Mr. Black fuck you, Mr. Fuck yeah. you, Mr. White guy. You yeah. fucking guy. So then how how who how'd you get into your first MMA gym? So I knew this guy. Um, I got kicked out of school, and I mean I was just going through. What, what grade? Ah, oh, fuck. I think I dropped out of tenth grade. Okay. I got kicked out of ninth grade. Uh. So dude, I was just angry, man. I was fucking angry, dude. I bet. Like, like, you know, people love this whole, like, Jeffrey Dahmer thing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not trying to eat motherfuckers and fuck dudes. Yeah. But I understand what that's like to fantasize about something and fixate on something mm -hmm. to a point where you start trying to act it out. So when I was younger, I don't know, dude, I just, I fantasized on violence. Like, I wanted to fucking kill somebody. Mm -hmm. I wanted to fucking stab somebody. That's anger you had come from as a child growing up yeah so i started like i started fantasizing about it and putting myself in situations to where like you know just like every other guy who fucking wants to kill somebody sure you start fantasizing about it and you start putting yourself in situations you start thinking about it and you start going through the fucking motions of it which i was doing when i'm talking about like 14 15 years old yeah. whether i'd be walking in like a shitty area carrying a knife or put a rock in my, like just fantasize about it so I got into fighting because it kind of scared me. And, you know, I thought I was like, a, I, I fucking, you know, most people that want to hurt people have low self-esteem. Correct. You don't really, I mean, unless you're like a narcissistic psychopath, most people that enjoy violence and bringing pain to people, it's all low self-esteem. Yeah, they're hurting inside, yeah. So I always thought fighting scared me and I hated it. So I joined a, I went to a gym just cause like I, I didn't want to feel like a bitch and I fucking loved it. First time I was ever happy, all the anger went away. Thank God. Yeah, yeah, man. Fuck, dude. But yeah, dude, Jesus fighting, Christ. dude. I always tell people, man, if you guys got PTSD, I used to hate. I used to hate on vets with PTSD all Jesus the time. Jesus Christ, dude. No, I'll tell you why. Because you hear these fucking pussies talk. Like, and no offense, I love soldiers. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, dude. Eesh. Like, I don't want I love. Oh, let's go troops. But no, I'm full circle. You would hear these fucking guys talk, and they're like, "Yeah, man, like, it's hard for me to leave the house." 
like I'm in social situations, I feel violent, yeah. I'm shut down. And I'm in my, and my, my thing is like, the fuck's wrong with you, man? That just sounds like every day. Why are you being a fucking pussy? Yeah, but you didn't do five tours in Iraq. But I'm saying, but here, now full circle back to the vets. Full circle back to the vets. And this is perspective. There you go. Just, come on, dog. Perspective, you, man. So, perspective. Once I realized that you're a normal human being, you go out with friends, you have family that you love, you, have, you go and drink, you fucking chase pussy, you go to high school parties, to be that human being and then have the veil drop. Mm-hmm. And to go from that to me, like I spent my entire life dealing with learning how to cope and function. And after I made that realization that, yeah, man, that would be a really hard motherfucking thing. Oh, there you go. So full circle, if you guys are vets out there yeah. and you fucking, you know, you want to snuff out your old lady or do some crazy shit. Snuff out. Just fucking go to join a gym, dude. Go to join a gym, fuck people up, get beat up, man. It takes the edge right off. You're in all this, like to wrap this up, you're, I, and I don't know how you're going to take this. You seem like a guy who doesn't take compliments well. You're a success story, Sean. Fuck. A crazy success story. Yeah, well, time time, look at him, look at him, time will tell. You, time will tell you guys. I don't guy, made that Tim. much money. No, it's a, no matter what happens. Oh, you a fight. You never fight again. Your success story did. You, if she's going to contact me, well, Sean, you, you insulted soldiers. Like, no, I didn't insult soldiers, no. you guys. I'm saying I, I, I relate to you motherfuckers. Yes. I know what it's like. Yeah. You also insulted Ronda Rousey. Like, no, I like no, you Ronda didn't Rousey. Her. Yeah. No, you're good, man. Yeah. You're good. No, life is good, dude. Life's fucking good. And, the, the, and then you fucking die, bro. Yep. I'm with you. You're success story. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to take that, but hopefully you're riding your motorcycle. You're like, ah, maybe I'm a success No, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to drive my motorcycle self-destructive and be like, I want to fucking kill myself. <laughs> I'm going to look at my speedometer no. and it's going to go to like 105 <laughs> And then traffic's gonna fucking it. stop going like <laughs> five gonna, miles per yeah. hour. And I'm gonna start cranking. It's gonna climb 115, <laughs> 125, and it's gonna fucking peak out. You're a wild fucking And then I'm boy. gonna see someone like almost hit me. And then like my, I'm gonna be like, oh, I almost fucking died. I feel better. Life is good. Like, yeah, life is fucking good. I feel better now. And the, it, it, <laughs> there's certain things in your life too. This is what makes you one of the reasons you're badass too. You don't drink. After you're with you, like, I don't drink. It's good. You had the. I the, smoke weed. I'm you, not. You, no, contrary belief. I've never done a drug in my life. No, I, and I don't think. You, I don't. Yeah, that's yeah. not even crossing. Caffeine, line. man. I thought maybe you drink, but no, you grew up. You know. But my father, abusive alcoholic, drank. You know, got on pills later on. Everything about him, I hated. Yes. Everything about him, I hated. And then you combine my racist origins of like you know more ethnic people do drugs, then I became more of like adamantly against it, adamantly yeah. against it. Now I started training and I grew out of all that. Now I can look back and be like, yeah, I shouldn't drink or do drugs. Yeah. It's probably not the best thing for me. No, dude, you've made out of the fucking slums your, your oh. success story, man. I'm I mean, again, you know, you know but this- again, I still, I still had a lot of like, you know, I, don't like, sell yourself short. No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, I've I slept in jams. If I rode my yeah, bike, you shouldn't be here. Yeah, but again, you know, like I, you know, I let my mom help me out. You know, I, my mom, give me. I had more privilege than most. More privilege than most. Okay. You know, if that makes you feel good. Yeah. You, you're a success story, Sean. I mean, fuck, I'm still not. Dude. I still might lose my fucking mind one day. So fucking, I'm making a list, you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Dude, cross me off that list. Come on, man. I'm just joking. Um, dude. No, get, no that's only when I go to bed at night. Sometimes I lay bed at night thinking, oh, man, if, if, everything, this, if everything goes to shit, everybody. I'm just everyone's <laughs> fucked. I mean, everyone's fucked. Let me get you out of here on no, this. No, I'll get you out of here, man. Uh, we'll end on this. Out of uh, some, just some fight picks. Alex Pierre. Izzy, who do you got? I got Izzy. Izzy's going to dance too. around, fucking run around, fight like a bitch. He's not going to do it either. He's not going to stand in front of him. I well, think, that's probably not smart. I think eh, it's not smart, dude. <laughs> it is what it is. So I think Izzy's going to win. Izzy, Izzy, Izzy has a very strange body type. Yep. It's hard to fight. Uh, Hamza, Colby Compton. I heard you on uh, another interview saying that should be the next oh, fight. dude. I think that will be How good of a fight is that? I would rather watch Hamza versus Colby than uh, Alex versus Izzy. I can agree with that. That's a fucking fight because Kobe doesn't go backwards. Yeah, that's gonna be. It's a great fight. I mean, as I know, I know Kamazot's fought a hard man with Gilbert, but you know, it's Kobe Kama, different animal. Different animal. Kobe American doing the damn thing. Yeah. But again, point. if he wins, give him a title belt shot. Agree. I'm sure if, if, if Chimaev wins, just fucking push him to a title. Unless you want to give him a cancel and make some more money. Yep. And then last. Wait, one. wait, 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 wait. Is, I thought is he going on eighty-five or or seventy? Uh, Hamza? Yeah. He, so he put 85, but then he called out Colby, so I think it's going to be at 70. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last one. Sean Strickland, Jared Cannonier. How's that going down? Oh, fuck. 
I five like rounds. It. And I, when I found out it was five rounds, I've been telling the stream manager, I'm like, I love that it's five rounds for you. So you guys are fine. It's hard to believe I've never watched Jerry Cannonier fight. I don't find that hard to believe. <laughs> I don't like watching fighting. I think about this shit too much. I obsess about it where it's like when I'm not, I don't like, you know. When you're not in full-blown camp. It's actually not. kind of funny too. Um, kind of funny. Uh, I watched one fight, Alex. That's why I watch fights. And he was fighting uh, Bruno Silva. Okay. And if you look at Bruno Silva, what was he landing? His straight cross. Yeah. Straight cross. So you thought. Straight cross. That's be, the move. Be scared of the straight cross. Yep. So if you notice, everything down the pipe, my hands where it needed to be. Yep. But what it wasn't for was his punch, his, his money maker. So I, I try not to get too fixated on guys because I stop, I stop just being myself and I start like trying to do what they do. Yeah, you stop reacting. That's what I got mean, you to the party. I mean, Jaron Cannon, he's a fucking scary motherfucker, dude. He used to you be know? heavyweight. Yeah, he's a heavy motherfucker. Yeah. He hits hard. I mean, who fucking knows? I could get knocked the fuck out. I could win. Who fucking knows? If, mean, I, if I knew, I'd be making a fuck ton of money betting. It's going to be a good fight, though. Yeah. But it depends on the odds. I still might make a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm if you win, I've never bet in my life. No, man. and if you win, you get a title shot, man. Well, I'm excited for everyone to show for a while. Yeah. Now, I don't know how you can get them on the motorcycle. Everyone comes to the show, we give shoes. Regardless, I know you're not super sneakerhead here. No, but sneakerhead, bro. Is that what the kids say these days? A sneakerhead? I don't think, no, it's that, that's that's more of like the older crowd. Called Are you, is it your brand issue or what? No, 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 no. I don't have my own shoe. I'm no. not there yet. But they, they might be more comfortable on your motorcycle. So these are, we have to do it no matter what. I know you're not a big sneakerhead. It doesn't matter. These are the rules of food truck. These are for you. They're some dope shoes. So these are from my boys. It says, Mr. Strickland, please wear and enjoy these. Pata, uh, yeah, Pata, Air Max, we know you'll love uh, beating the crap out of people, and these seem like the perfect murdered out pair for you. They're all black. Who the fuck is uh, uh, Suplex. Suplex? It's a store in uh, Philly who gives me shoes for the fighters. Oh, shit. So they pick them out. These are for you. Th these are expensive shoes, so if you don't like them, you can price I'll them. tell you what. I'm not a big fan of free shit. I don't like being on things, but, man, I appreciate that, and I don't think I'll ever wear these, but thanks, boss. That works, brother. Appreciate you coming on. Sean Strickland, everybody. Thank you, brother. If you're into thick boys, <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and God bless America. Well, that's not my big one. Just kidding.